Check out a check. Check out a check check. Check out a check. Sounds like we're doing good. Ah, now we got a camera down. Camera down! It's all right, it's only tertiary. Maybe we can lower this. This is aggressive music, perhaps. Oh, that'd be great, thanks. We're live! Kill this audio here. Check my audio here. Stay with me, everybody. Can you hear me? Oh, that's fucking lovely. Hello, yes, and welcome to the Hack Shack Live program. We're just about to start doing some items and some things in the kitchen, cleaning out the cupboards, cleaning out the fridge. I thought I'd fire up the old stream. See who's out there and uh, get this thing going. So if you're here, hello, thanks for joining. Um, I actually set up a camera outside today for the grill. They're gonna be grilling some chicken. We're gonna see how that works, how that sounds. Testing, testing, testing. My cutting board cam seems to be not working with all of my other situations, but we have a new and improved, not shitty stove top cam, which is gonna be great. Uh, and usually I have a, you know, my cutting board cam, but it seems like it's down. So bear with me one second while I grab a little something downstairs. I wonder if you can still hear me. Well, I'm going to check this later. See how this sounds. All right. We've got the phone. We're taking your phone calls. 843 Rebel TV. Ringy ring. Callie call. I don't know where I can put that. That looks, that seems right. Uh, so let's just fucking get to it, because uh, I got shit to do, and um, we'll get to it. So let's try this first. Let's fire up the old grill outside. So let's go to the outside cam. And hopefully you can hear me and still see me and see the grill activity. I think it looks, yeah, it looks like it's working. So what we're gonna do, the grill's a little bit crusty from last time we used it. So per usual, anytime you fucking rock the grill, you're gonna wanna fire all them bitches up as hot as possible. Every burner you got, get them going. This grill needs a cleaning, I know it. So we're just gonna let this get nice and toasty. And then we're gonna come out, we're gonna grill some activity on there. It's gonna be fucking beautiful. Hopefully the light stays. The lighting stays in our favor, hopefully. What are we gonna be grilling? All right, that's a great question. Oh man, if only I had a fucking, had someone working the camera, so that would be great. What are we gonna be grilling? Who can say? Oh, that's right, I forgot I was gonna make this too. Fuck. Looks like we're making more than just that. All right, we'll get to that in a minute. I'll remind me to get out the pan for that. If I don't get the pan ready now, I'll forget. I'll forget to make me dinner. And we can't have that. So, this lighting is fucking bizarre here. I gotta... Yeah, very responsive. Let me check that camera right quick. Let me just do a little bit of this. Looks like the grill's smoky smoking outside. That doesn't seem right. 
What did I drop in there last? Can you see the grill still outside? Yeah, all right. Let me go see what's going on out here. What's burning? What did I, oh, all the barbecue I had on here. Yeah, that's fine. Keep on burning, bro. So I played with a little bit of barbecue experimentation yesterday outside on the grill. And that's what's, that's what's smoking copiously outside. You can't really see it from the camera, I guess. But whoever's here, do me a favor. Keep an eye on the, uh, the temperature gauge. When it gets raging hot, I'm going to uh, get my ass back out there. And, uh... Nah, nah, nah. Focus. Okay. Sorry, I'm just playing with the playing with the white balance here just to get it a little bit better. Well, that should be good enough. I don't know what else to say. All right. Hopefully it sounds good and hopefully it looks good and the lighting doesn't get too annoying. Definitely need some, whatever, we'll be all right. Moving on. What are we, oh, fuck my ass. Just don't do that. Just don't do that. See, this is real. This is what happens. It looks like there's, hey, you can't even see it on my cutting board here. What a goddamn mess. I just broke the fucking bag all the chicken was in. God damn it. Well, while we clean up this fucking salmonella pile, I can explain to you what we're actually doing here. Ugh. This fucking flimsy ass bag of fucking chicken. Oh no, the computer's almost covered in mustard. That's fucking... A gross. I guess that's what's gonna happen. You know, this is fucking live shit, dude. This is what we're talking about. It doesn't smell lovely, though. Uh, so that bag that just burst all over the place that looks like egg yolk, which I guess you can't see because there's no <laughs> there's no camera there. Um, it's actually um, chicken breast that I trimmed down and cleaned up and made into grillable little cutlets that uh, that uh, we're gonna grill. And what I like to do is just grill a whole bunch at once. So I have them whenever I need a little snack or need a little bite for lunch. You know, not every day I'm gonna be fucking cooking up full on fucking meals. Some days I just need to eat something and go on my fucking day. So I can grill up all this chicken now, be fucking done with it, and then just fucking pick when I need it. Now, the beauty of that bag fucking opening is that it all drained out already, which is fucking great, because that's what we're going to do anyway. So, you know, could be worse things. Let's rinse this board uh, just one more time. A little soapy soap. an entirely separate board on top of my board just to get my chickens out and get it all ready to go. Because I don't like chicken contaminating my board, even though we already contaminated the board with the chicken, see? Um, so, since this is mustardy, I wouldn't always do this, but for the sake of cleanliness and the show, and my fucking hands. Um, I should have started the barbecue sauce first, but that's all right. I'm gonna, you want this chicken when you're grilling it, in case you didn't know this, which I guess is why you'd be watching this. 
You want it to be dry. It's very important that your chicken is dry. You know, if you want a nice crust, a nice sear on your chicken, you don't want it soaked in this marinade, marinade, if you will, like this. It's, um, it'll still cook and it'll still be delicious, but it's going to be lacking the crust and the grill and the char, which is the whole point. Ah, oh, fuck, I'm still getting chicken all over myself. I'm an asshole. All over um, the chicken. That's a fucking contaminated mess in here. That's okay. Let's rinse off the old hands. So this mound of chicken that's here, which I guess you can't see. This could have been executed a little bit better, I suppose. But what are you going to fog and do? Ah, oh, man, it's getting dark out. No, we're going to grill this first. This is going to be great. So you just want to dry this shit off because you don't want it to be, like I said, uh, wet. So every piece, that's right, every piece that you marinated, get that fucking marinade off. It's that time. It's time to remove the marinade. And again, you don't gotta go crazy. You just don't want it to be soaking wet. Like straight out of the bag onto the grill. No bueno. That's, you're just gonna be steaming chicken that you're gonna be trying to grill flavor of this has been marinating for, I don't know, at least 24 hours, so your meat should be penetrated by now. And this is like a, this is like a honey, I, I just had some like leftover, I don't know even what it was, it was like a, like a mustard glaze I made or something like that. And I was cleaning out the fridge and I said, this is going to be perfect for all this chicken. So now I got all this mustardy seasoned chicken. That's ripe and ready to go for the grill. And what we're going to do is we're going to go fucking straight out to the grill. And we're going to grill the fuck out of it before we lose daylight because I don't have a lighting rig outside. Because this is my fucking kitchen. This isn't a goddamn studio. This is a lot of chicken. We're going to have to vacuum seal some of this after we cook it perhaps and freeze it. I guess I bought the bulk pack. I do love a deal. All right. All right, so this chicken's ready to fucking rage. That cutting board can go into the into the old pit. Now I cut these chicken uh, breasts into fairly thin cutlet style slices, um, and I did that for good reason. I did that because. Uh, I want it to cook quick. I want to char char, move on with my day, like I said. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some tongs. We're going to take some oil. Spray oil. I have a spray um, bottle full of uh, canola oil for the grill, specifically for the grill. And what we're going to do is we're going to go outside to the grill. Oh my god, that whole time I had the fucking grill up like an asshole. Wow, that's great. Hey, my dog's there. You can see him. All right, great. Well, we're going to go out to the grill now. I'm glad you could hear me talk in the kitchen, yet not watch me. That was good. Um, we're doing great. Luckily, that was just an empty pan. Yeah, all right, let's go outside and grill some fucking chicken up in this. Hello, hello. Hopefully our audio is processing. Ooh, it's chilly out. So the grill has been heated, which is nice. Get yourself a wire brush to clean off your grill. Wire brush is very important. A sturdy, this one's been seen a lot of activity, a wire brush, and you want to clean that fucking grill. It's super hot. All the crust has gotten off of the grates. All this leftover barbecue that I had on here from yesterday has been removed, and this grill is ready to go. But first, 
We must oil the grill. The grates need a little bit of oil on it so our chicken doesn't stick. So I know my grill pretty well. I know that I have four zones of heat with a pseudo dead zone right here because there's a, there's a separate burner that's there. And I think for the sake of argument, we'll just turn that on. So I have an extra hot zone here and a normal hot zone here. And I also know that the two back rear corners, which is probably similar to your grill, the rear corners um, are the hottest part of the grill. So we have this huge mound of chicken, which I guess you didn't see because I didn't switch the camera view. It's been marinated 24 hours in a mustard glaze that I previously made that I couldn't tell you about, but I think it has maple syrup, mustard, added a little salt, a little oil, um, and it's ready to go. So uh, when you're putting your chicken onto the grill, see, I, like I said, I cut these pretty thin, so they'll they'll um, cook up fairly quickly. Um, there's obviously two sides to your chicken. There's the there's the flat, prettier side, and then there's the rough side on this piece in particular. So what you want to do is take the piece, take the side that you're, you know, would ideally have presented first. You know, the side that looks like it's going to take a sear nicer, and just pop that shit on the grill. And it doesn't matter how you put them on. You want to put them on, like I said, the the nice side down. Not quite sure what is catching on fire down there. Oh, the whole grill's on fire. That's good. Turn off that middle burner. This is good for TV, at least. There's a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, what do you call it? Residual fat from yesterday in here. Let's see, which we can pull out. So I seared off some barbecue here yesterday and all that fat is sitting in the bottom and it's burning and it's creating the illusion of this death fire. But what it really is, is just this huge pool of fat that's burning underneath, which is nothing to really be concerned about because I just saw what's on fire and it's all right. So I'm not too worried about it, except for the fact that it might be giving off some black smoke that might look, make my chicken look not so pretty. Um, and that's okay though. The chicken's gonna cook, it's still gonna be delicious. So we can keep that like that. So what I do is I keep the grate open. I bake the chicken. The heat to come up from underneath, go through the chicken, and then after it's about 60% cooked, we're gonna flip them all and let them finish at a lower heat. Uh, I think that fire in there is under control, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, yeah. And you got to clean your grill seasonally, especially when you use it all the time, like me. Um, that's just that's just that's just the rule of life, bruh. I think my audio is coming through fairly clear, and it looks like uh, it's showing fairly well. Also, so we could keep this here and get started inside of the barbecue sauce, as long as that doesn't engulf into huge flames, which I don't think it will. Uh, let's cut back to here. All right, looking good. So, uh, I, like I said previously, if you caught it, was playing with some um, barbecue ribs and brisket and things like that for, uh, I was sous vide um, or getting into to sous vide. Uh, I sous vide some brisket and some ribs and all these things and seasoned them like barbecue, cooked them very low for 36 hours at 155. Pulled them out and tested them last night, like I said, on the grill, and they came out delicious. Very close to a real accurate barbecue flavor. So the ribs, I know I cooked a little bit too long, so the, the flavor is there, but uh, it's going to need, usually I'd eat them dry, but what it needs really is um, a barbecue sauce. When I heat it up, it's going to lacquer it with some barbecue sauce, and I don't have any barbecue sauce. But what I do have is copious amounts of ketchup and pickle juice and all these other things that I need to use. So what we're going to be making is a fridge clearing barbecue sauce and that's the beautiful thing about barbecue sauce you could just put any and everything you got in there and I was gonna put some fresh onions in there um, and blend it up but I may or may not do that now I'm not 100% sure so we're just gonna go through the fridge and pick out some things that we got that we need to use I got an onion here so I'm leaning that way I have a lot of pickle juice which I like for acidity in my barbecue sauce 
I know I have some garlic in here, some fresh garlic, so I might, I mean, it looks like we're going to be blending it. So I might as well get, I might as well just use a whole, a whole white onion in there instead of this red onion I could use in a salad. Um, olives, not so much. Chicken, cranberry. I know I got some fruit jams in here, but I don't think I want to go the fruit route on there yet. That's something to be determined, you know? If you want to get your barbecue sauce a little fruity, you can do that. This is America. But out the gate, that's not where I'm going to start with. This is some kind of glaze. That's old, but if it's good, I think we're just going to use it. Mmm, jam. It's like a spicy apricot. That's spicy. I don't hate that, but that's a spicy. That's a little too. I like spice. Don't get me wrong, but my barbecue sauce doesn't need that kind of heat. Mustard, some hot sauce. I think we're good with that. We got a good base, so let's get that going. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up this 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 pot, and we're just gonna cook this shit until it gets barbecue sauce where we want it to be. I'm going to have to blend it up. How's that chicken doing out there? That looks good. Um, we're going to have to blend up the barbecue sauce because we're putting in whole onions and garlic, but it's okay. It's going to give us more flavor. I did think about putting an apple in here because I do have a couple apples in my fridge. And I don't know if that's something I want to do, but let's see. I like the taste of apple. Um, I think I like the taste of apple in my barbecue sauce. I think we might do it. Fresh garlic, so the pot's going. We just want to rough chop this because we want to get a lot of color on this uh, onion. I don't want raw onion, you know, I don't want it to be like a, um, like a, not raw, but you know what I mean. I don't want it undercooked. I want a nice, nicely caramelized onion. That takes a lot of flavor. And then we could deglaze the pan with maybe some of this pickle juice or some other kind of acid, maybe some booze. Maybe we got some bourbon up in there. Bourbon and barbecue sauce is a thing. The kids love that. So we're gonna throw a little bit, decent bit, canola oil up in there. And now we're gonna throw these onion up in there. A little sizzle, sizzle. Now, if I had some more of that seasoning that I, I marinated all my um, barbecue in, I, I'd use that, but I think I used all of it. So we'll hit this with a little bit of seasoned salt and a little normal salt and pepper mix that I use on my hamburgers just because it's standing there next to me. We're going to grab this situation here and we're going to get some color on this. So we're just going to cook this down and get some color. And with all that oil that's in there, this is also the time that we're going to start incorporating uh, any and all um, dried spices once this starts getting a little bit more. And I have a whole bunch here. I don't know really where I want to go. That's the nice thing about barbecue sauce. You could kind of go wherever you want. I did find this in my pantry. I don't know if I want to use it, and I think I don't know what the hell else I'll do with this, so I might be putting this in my barbecue sauce. Your barbecue sauce needs some kind of sugar component. This is a ham glaze that came with a ham. It's got brown and cane sugar, spices, which is the thing that scares me, honey powder, and oil of orange. Spices is the only thing that scares me. If there's like clove in here, I may or may not want that, but fuck it. I'm not going to use this. I'm not making a ham anytime soon, so this might be my sugar component. That might be the sugar play. I got some cinnamon, some chili powder, some paprika, coriander. I got some hot paprika. I have a multitude of spices we can get into here. I'm open to any of them. Uh, I just don't know what I want to use. So let's go outside while that cooks down and check on this chicken. See how it's looking. All right, let's see. Oh yeah. So, you know, you want to take the piece that you started with, the first piece that you put on. I wouldn't advise eating like that, but I do. I am flip. This is not, I should have oiled the chicken. 
Um, but it's okay. It's sticking a little, whoa, that's a blackened piece. So with that flame up on the grill, you could see that one, all the sugars in the chicken went right up in the, in the darkness and charred up, well, I'll say really nicely. Some people would say burnt. But where the fire was over here, I expect all of these to be pretty black. But I'm not mad at it. I like some char on my food. That's actually not that bad. Wish this wasn't sticking so much, but what can you do? Oil your meats and oil your grill more than I did. Okay, the sugar's almost cooked. We got enough char on it. Let's lower the fire. This is some radiant heat could finish it out. I mean, I, I'm, I dare to say that these chickens are all really fully cooked. Oh yeah, that's delicious. Wow, it's really fucking good. Wow, it's a hell of a marinade. I have to sell that shit. Well, what I will do is, um, Once we're done grilling outside, I'll bring that camera inside. So, uh, we could get the cutting board cam back up. The other thing I'll do... Is strain this pickle juice. Because we're going to use this in the barbecue sauce. I'm also going to save the jar, because that's probably where I'm going to put the fucking barbecue sauce in. Yeah. Pickle juice adds a great acidity, but has a lot of flavor, salt. Oh yeah, it's the garlicky goods. That's straight up garlicky pickle juice. I love that. You don't want it to be, you know, these pickles are not the best pickles, but the juice is good. Oh, texture's not good. Not a fan of that. Not very good pickles. There's a lot of, like, allspice in there or something? I don't know what the fuck they're making those pickles with. The juice is very good. The brine's delicious. You want to use that. So these onions are doing their thing. Seems to, I would think that's a lot of onions, but what the fuck? Cut up some garlic. And then once that all cooks down nicey nice, we'll um, Let's go check on that. Outside. Now what it could do is glaze that chicken outside. I didn't change, switch the camera again. See, this is tough. This is tough. We're losing daylight here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all these chicken beets, bits, and beets. The chicken's cooked. All right, I'm not too worried about it. Fully cooked, if I do say so myself. And I do. I just said it. So I want to make sure the thicker pieces are, are fully cooked, you know? I don't want any undercooked chicken. I could get in there with my hands because I barely feel my hands. I don't know if I'd advise that for you. I'm going to try to bring this camera inside too. Okay, 
Lovely. Nothing else to be done on the grill. Let me shut it down. I'll bring the camera inside. That is some tasty chicken. Mm hmm. This is looking nice. We're getting some nice color here on these onions. Nice browning. If we're going to throw the apple in, I think we should do it now. Do we throw an apple in? Man, we're adding a lot of weird shit. I don't know if we need an apple in here. I'd rather put some like fruit and stuff. I could eat an apple. No apple. We'll use Calvados or Applejack or something. We don't need an apple. Let's put in some... Uh, Let's get a little chili powder in there, just a little bit. Let's get a little red pepper flake. That was a little bit more than I wanted. We're gonna blend this, so I don't care. I'll put the whole coriander in there. Normally I would not, I would make it a powder, but I know this base is gonna go into the, uh, there's a pinch of cinnamon. A little hot paprika. A little hot paprika. Just a wee bit. This stuff's actually pretty hot. We're gonna save this um, sugar for when it's time to add sugar component. Throw a little bit of freshy paprika. We needed to glaze this with something, with definitely some dried garlic. You know, we need all the garlics. This is granulated garlic, pizza garlic, if you will. It seems to be that I have a little Aleppo pepper in here. Sounds like a nice component. Also have some chopped dried onion. Seems like the right thing to do. Have whole onions, fresh onions, dried onions, every co flavor component that you can find. Oregano. Just a little bit. I have some cumin here somewhere. I want a pinch of that in there. Not too much. I don't want it to be like a... Cumin, coriander, white pepper. All right, see, I made that mix before. All right, so that's going. All right, that's going nicely. We got this chicken out of here. Looks like it's blinding the camera. I think you can see what's going on in here. So, these spices are blooming. Smelling lovely. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we needed to glaze this now with something and I could use pickle juice or I can use booze or I can use both. I think we'll use a little bit of both. Let me go get some booze. I could use some brandy perhaps, some cognac, Applejack, bourbon. Mainly, let's pick something that I don't wanna drink. How's that sound? I got some Jack here. I don't hate Jack, but I'll probably have some more cook-friendly items over here. Apple brandy, I do love. Cognac, I don't really use cognac for anything, and I use a little, I have too much of it here that I used in some eggnog recipes, so we're gonna use some cognac. My dog looks like he wants to come inside. You wanna come in, bud? Cognac smells boozy and nice. 
We're just gonna put a little bit in there, just to deglaze, and then we'll add a lot of the vinegar in there. It's just, just another flavor. Once that heats up, just a little glug glug, just to get all those flavor compounds, all that fond off the bottom of the pot. And then once that cooks down, once that cooks down a little bit, we're going to add some of the pickle juice. Um, and then, then we'll add some ketchup, which is the pure base, if you will, of the barbecue sauce. And then um, we'll add just a little bit of that. And then once that uh, ketchup situation there you go, bud. Once that ketchup situation is, uh, sorry, I'm distracted. I have to feed this pup. My dog demands food as well. Very demanding. All right. There you go, fella. And we're back. So the barbecue sauce is a going. Chicken is cooked. That cognac is cooking off because you don't, you know, we don't want cognac sauce. We, we just want to kind of get some of that essence out. It looks like it cooked off nicely. I think you can see it. Can you see that in the can? I think we can. We're we're gonna use this too soon, so don't worry. So let's get some of this uh, pickle juice in here. Now let's cook it down. I'll use about half right now. I have like a whole fucking jar of pickle juice. Because I save it. Every time I bust open some pickles, I gotta throw out the jar, and you know, we're done with the pickles, you save the juice. Because then one day you're gonna go, ah, fuck, man, I'm trying to make some barbecue sauce. How do I make it better? And then you go, fuck yeah, dude. Remember that weird guy on the internet told me to use pickle juice? And now look at you. You're doing it. So while that fixes itself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go reclaim that other camera from outside and bring it inside. Um, and then I can have a the dash cam essentially set back up because we're done grilling. But I'm glad that worked. And I can still talk to you. That's great. Let's not get mad at it. And there we go. And here we go. Let me just bring this guy right back in here. There you are. Yep. Oh, yeah. There. Yep, there it is. Okay. That's fun. Oh, there it is. Okay. Up, oh, up, oh, okay. Dropping all the things. All right. Let's get back inside. Let's get the cam up. Oh, this fucking other cam is a piece of garbage. It didn't, it didn't do what we wanted it to do. Maybe I'm overrunning the stream station with a few too many cameras. It's possible, also very likely, but that's okay because we're going to be back in action. Un momento. Let's tighten this bitch up. There we go. Let's fix what we broke. Let's close that window. And yeah, we're back. There we go. So let's see. We could probably make that look a little bit better. Oh, can't go that way. How's that pickle juice doing? It's reducing very nicely. Ah, that's that looks lovely. Uh, so let's just scooch the old cutting board cam and then we'll put this over here sorry I'm just making it no I disconnect oh hello sir I just disconnected the uh, I had the camera outside for the grill activities that were going on and seeing if that worked and it did and now I just relocated inside and now I'm just moving the cameras around so this makes a little bit more sense and then I'm going to put this up here and put this over here and this over here and this goes here and then that goes there. It's 
very tricky without a mouse. You know, we use a fucking trackpad, not the best. And boom. That should be a little bit better. Cutting board cam, fully live and operational. We can operate here. Can you see that? No, you see this? We need you to go down like that. That's what we want you to see. Yeah, that makes sense. And so, ketchup very important for barbecue sauce. Molasses. All right, so this is going here. And we're gonna Vitamix the fuck out of this so this becomes a nice puree. And then we'll get some uh, ketchup and other tomato type products in there to get going. So, and let's not forget the ham glaze. I'm gonna eat another piece of this delicious chicken. Now I can show now I can show the people this chicken that I grilled. You can barely see it on the grill, but look at this delicious chicken. Mmm. Juicy. Just slightly burnt. Due to a out of control grill fire. So this is reducing. Is this camera good over? Yeah. I'll put this on the back bar. No, how am I gonna do? Full blast on that. Next thing we're gonna do. is make, I don't even know what I call this. I've been making this the last couple times I go to the store to buy stuff because it's very easy to make and relatively healthy. Um, one could make it completely low carb um, and carb free. I throw a little bit of bread crumb in there because I don't live that life. But yeah, you try to live healthy. So you don't gotta, I'm not trying to eat bread every fucking day of my life, but you know, when, you, when it calls for it, you put the fucking bread in. So what this is, this dish is, uh, it's a pizza dish, or, or, or for lack of a better term, pizza. What I do is I essentially make, it's actually more, I would, it's probably more akin to uh, a um, chicken parm, really. So if you hear about these places that do the chicken parm, um, they make a big patty of chicken parm, and then they uh, they lay it out, and then make it look real nice like a pizza and slice into slices. It's cute and delicious, but I don't like frying in my house, because one, I think it smells, two, I'm afraid I'm going to fry absolutely everything if I start frying, and that's not, that's not what I'm trying to do. So. What I use is a cast iron pan. I use chicken sausage, you could use pork sausage, and then I essentially make a very large patty out of the chicken sausage, um, cook it on one side, and then um, once it's cooked on the one side, I flip it over, sauce it, cheese it, put it on the broiler, pull it out, and it's it's not chicken parm, because it's not parmesan, it's not, uh, it's not cooked like that. Um, kind of stop eating this chicken. Is that rude? I don't know. Um, it's not chicken parm, but it's definitely like a low carb chickeny pizza thing. Now, is it satisfying my need for pizza? No. If I want pizza, I gotta go fucking eat pizza. I'm not eating cauliflower pizza and telling myself it's pizza. That's foolish. Don't live that life like that. If you gotta eat pizza, bro, just eat the pizza. Make up for it tomorrow in the gym or something. You know what I'm saying? My pickle juice is reducing quite nicely. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go through what I do for this pizza fucking situation. That looks good. So what I think we're gonna do is I think I think we're gonna add this sugar base to that now. 
a little ketchup, and then we're gonna stir it up. We're gonna try this first. Make sure it's not. You gotta test it like a test it like a like a cop in a drug movie. Like, oh yeah, it's definitely got cinnamon in it. It's definitely got a hammy vibe. You know what? It's very sugary though. It's more sweet than anything. I'm not mad at it. We're going with it. Cause then I don't gotta use. I don't have that much sugar here. I don't fucking bake like that. So you know, we want the barbecue sauce to be sweet. You know, we. I want a sweet component in that barbecue sauce for sure. I want sweet. I want sour. I want you know bite. I want all that shit. A little heat. Now let's add some cat soup to this. Cook it down a little bit, and then we're gonna blend it up. And then we'll add more ketchup and more liquids as we need and more spices. But that's a good start. Of course, why would you not just spill fucking ketchup all over the place? You spilled mustard all over earlier. Why not get it fucking ketchup everywhere too? Like a fucking hot dog cart. What are you running here? A fucking hot dog cart? What are you doing, bruh? Good, good God, grief, man. All right, get your shit together, brother. All right, ketchup's cleaned up, mostly. So again, we just want this to cook through a little bit so everything gets incorporated and then we're gonna dump it into the Vitamix and whiz the ever-living shit out of it. This is gonna be a brown. I'm, the flavors that I'm getting from this right now that I'm thinking, this is gonna taste like a McDonald's barbecue sauce, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But while that cooks a little bit, put that on low, I'm gonna get the mixing on this on this patty here, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up this pan. Not that pan, this pan. Actually, we could put this one over here. We could put this one over here, this one over here, this one over here. Put the rear on low, the front on high, and then we're gonna treat it like meatballs. We're gonna sample a little bit, and we're gonna see how it comes out. And I'll show you my method I use, and you too can rip it off and impress somebody if you like, or make believe you're impressing somebody. So again, I just get I get chicken sausages that were already made, Italian style chicken sausages. Um, I haven't had this brand from this place, but um, we're gonna try it today. It looks very white meat focused, that's for sure. It smells very much like cheese. Usually I'd add a lot of cheese, but these are cheese and parsley sausages, and there's definitely a lot of cheese in here. I can smell it. If you could buy the bulk sausage, you could do that. You don't need to do what I'm doing. It's a lot of work. But essentially what you want to do is you want to take all the sausage out, and then we're going to make a big, a big patty out of it, and then we're just going to pan fry the patty, flip it once the one side has a really nice crust on it, and then uh, treat it like a pizza. We're going to throw it under a broiler, give it some flame, Get the top chart up nice, pull it out, let it rest, and then slice yourself off a little piece, and you end up eating it with a fork and knife. And it's not really pizza, again, like I said, but it's, uh, it's fucking good. Why am I wearing a glove when I'm covering both hands in meat anyway? Because I'm going to mush this one up with my gloved hand. That's why. So relax. There we go. Usually I use a little bit less. I use probably like two sausages. This is probably double what I usually use. But that's okay. So that's, uh, you know, pound, pound and a half. Throw an egg in there, you know, because you want a little binder. I usually throw a bunch of cheese, like I said, in, but it seems like they got that part covered. And I throw a little uh, breadcrumb just to bind it together. That's all. 
It's a little bit. You don't need a bunch. And then mushy mush, smashy smash. It's like you're making a big shitty meatball, kind of. Look at that yolk. Why does that yolk look so yellow? Because these are from my chickens, that's why. And you just mush the shit out of it. And then you're just going to make one big flat um, patty. I'll tell you what this needs, though. I can tell already, because I, I know how I like... I know how I like my stuff. This needs more garlic. And we'll hit it with red pepper later. It doesn't need that really right now. But you can make this as spicy as you want. You could just buy straight up ground chicken and make this yourself. You don't gotta buy sausage. I find just buying the sausage makes it easier. I'm just trying to make shit easier in my life here. So this looks good. This looks like I'm gonna be able to make a nice patty out of this. And what I do is I get a pizza pan, like such, and uh, what I'll do, usually I would put some plastic wrap down on here first. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I will spray it with some oil, so it releases a little bit easier. I'll rub that oil in. But I'm not gonna uh, plastic wrap it, that'll probably come back to bite me in the ass when I try to get this off and it doesn't come off, but what are you gonna do? All right. So that's sufficiently lubed. And then you just dump this bitch on here. And then you just want to make it even. The key here is even. And you want it to be an even circle if you can. You know, like a pizza. Like a pizza. You can make it thick if you want some deep dish like an idiot. Or you can try to make it as thin as possible like a normal human being. Very important. What are you barking at, dude? Get a hold of yourself. And, and luckily this pan I know fits in here. So what I can do is uh, I can flip this over and hit it a lot to get it off if it sticks, which I can tell it's going to stick. But that makes for entertaining uh, television, so it's okay. So I'm gonna try to make this one a little thinner than I usually do, because it, it's letting me. I don't know, the sausage, the grind on it's letting me, letting me, you know, pat it out a little thinner than usually, usually. And you want it to resemble a peach as much as you can, so if you can make a crusty crust on it, you know, make it, make it nice. Dude, hey! Shh. Again, if I had the plastic wrap on here, that would be the smartest thing. I don't know why I did not do that. It seems like a very foolish fucking move on my part, because this is not, I mean, this isn't going to come off. I mean, what, what are we doing? Why, why would we do this? Um... But I have some hope that I could aggressively throw this in here and it'll it'll treat itself properly. So that's it. So once you have this here, uh, you can see it here, right? Or you can see it here. You, you, that's just chicken, bruh. Not cauliflower and cheese. It's chicken, egg, and I use, like I said, a pinch of breadcrumb because I like what that does. And if we're going to do this weird method where I'm going to try to get it to come off there without breaking, two things. One... Let's try to spatula it. Two, maybe we put some breadcrumb on this so it kind of pizzas up. This was dumb. This is dumb. What I should do is pull this off, get a fucking plastic wrap, and do the right fucking thing. Because otherwise it ain't going to fucking work. Oh, no, I got to... I smart. Watch this. We're going to plastic wrap it. Real nice, real smart. And now we can make believe we're putting it in the pan. Flippy flip. And of course it didn't come off. And now we can get it off if we can in one piece as much as possible. This would have been a fucking unmitigated disaster if we tried to do that. And now this is a lot more reasonable. I'm not gloving, we're just gonna fix it and then wash my hands and then we'll play from there. This is much better of a method. So now I can just fucking put this bitch up in there and then uh, flop it on down. Let's try the breadcrumb trick. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it gets, it's probably just gonna burn. This is probably very foolish also. 
That's just gonna be like a little burnt. But fuck it, let's try it. So you want your pan hot? I'm gonna wash my hands. Let's get that pan hot, smoky smoking. Not a boy. I hear you. You gotta relax. Wash your fucking hands, yeah! It's very important to wash your hands. What are you, what are we barking at, dude? It's pitch black and you were outside all fucking day. You don't gotta go out. Hello? Yeah, it's working. All right, good. We'll do it in dishes. Let's check the Vitamix. Let's check the barbecue sauce. How's it looking? Oh! I mean, this is going to be sweet. There's no fucking question about it. There's sugar in the fucking... There's sugar in the... Um, ham fucking glaze we added in there. There's sugar in the fucking... There's honey in there. There's sugar in the ketchup. There's sugar in the cognac. There's sugar in this molasses I'm adding right now. This is some fucking North Krakalaki style. You know what I mean? No, this would be more like... Um, what style of barbecue has the, the sweet as fuck? The Carolina? That's some Carolina shit. Bo shit. Dude, I don't, you're not even, I don't know what you're even really barking at. This color's looking good though. It's gonna aerate a little bit and uh, maybe lighten up. I like it to look redder, but what the fuck are you gonna do? This pan is screaming hot. We're gonna oil it. And now, like I said, we're gonna go in we're going for the kill with the faux chicken pizza situation. Pan's hot, real nice. And so you want to go quick and you want to go quick and decisive or really probably the move is you, what you certainly don't want to do is burn your plastic. So just get your plastic ready to rip right off. So once this goes, it's going to start cooking right away. So you just want to go, flippy flip in. Boom, look at that. Don't fear it. If you question it and fear it, it will own you. And that's not what you want. So what I'm gonna do is thoroughly clean this pan that's thoroughly chickened up. And I'm gonna serve the pizza on here, or the chicken parm, or you know, whatever you wanna call that. Let's thermonuclear fucking heat this thing. Let's soak the fuck out of it. Let's give it a rinse. Bada boy, you're being very rude. I see you're just barking at yourself in the mirror. This is very foolish. I see you, dude. You don't gotta look at me like that, like I'm ignoring you. Okay. So this pan is gonna be ready to land this pizza. Uh, the one thing that we did not do is prepare the oven for broiling. And I store all my pans like any normal person in their fucking oven. So, just get your broiler on, crank that bitch on high. Where's that spatula? And just let this go. It doesn't have to go fast. You can, you know, it can, it can take its sweet time. Generally, uh, you want it to cook not fully, but a lot on the one side. And then give it a flip and, and you know, hope it doesn't really need that much after that. You wanna cook it, um, like I said, 50, 60% of the way through, then give it a flip. Um, what else? How much other shit can I do in a day for Christ's sakes? Can't stop eating this fucking grilled chicken, I'm telling you, it's banging. Oh boy, you gotta pipe it down. Dude! Shh. You wanna go out? I'll let you out, man. Killing me though. Let's go. I'll let you out. Is this what you want, dude? You wanna go outside? Go ahead. Cranky boy. All right, so now my house smells like frying meatballs and chicken sausage and barbecue sauce. The barbecue sauce is looking nice though. I'm, I'm looking, I feel like it's, I feel like it's gonna land in a good place. Every time I make barbecue sauce, it comes out differently. Not once does it come out bad. 
So I think we're going to go with it on the barbecue sauce now, because again, everything in there is cooked. You know, that we cooked, we got the flavor out of the onions. We got it where we, woo, where we wanted it to be. My kitchen's falling apart. Uh, and now we're just going to pull this out, put it right in the old. This is still got. I made a tomato soup earlier, and it's a little bit on the outside still. Kind of gross. How's it on the outside? Ah, right, whatever. The inside's clean. This I know. And let's be honest. That's what matters. Get all your crap out of here. So what we want to do is, you know, we want to, we're going to aerate this. We're going to blend this. And we're going to get all of that fucking goodness in here. We can lower that a little bit. And let's also get the scraper we're going to use anyway on the blender and get every last drop. So I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in this because I think that spice pack probably got a shitload of salt. I think the ketchup's got a lot of salt in it too. And I could taste that right now, but really why? Because we're gonna start blending it and incorporating all these other flavors. It's not gonna tell me what it's gonna taste like. So cover your ears. Let's go. Ah, you thought I was gonna fucking fire that up without covering it now, didn't ya? That would have been pleasant. Engage. So we're just going to let that rip. Chicken situation's going nicely, which means get your already made tomato sauce, which you should always have on hand out, and your shitty low moisture mozzarella. Tell you what, brother, sister. This is gonna be some good goddamn barbecue sauce. Thanks, whoever just followed. Um, the texture on this is looking chunky and weird, but we're gonna dilute it and add some more flavors to it, so it's okay. Uh, the flavor is kind of like what I said. It's, it's McDonald's barbecue sauce. And I think that really is because from the last time I ever had bar McDonald's barbecue sauce, if I recall, it tastes a lot like uh, like a mix between like like bullseye barbecue sauce, which I like, and like um, just like, you know, I don't know, some weirdness, weird McDonald's shit. I don't know what they're adding to it. Um, but what this does need is a little bit more acid. It's very sweet, very tomatoey, but not particularly. We're gonna go with all of that barbecue, all that um, pickle juice rather. So it definitely needs a lot of acid. And we can fire this up, and we're gonna cook this down. Now that we have, you know, all the solids that we put in there are liquefied. Now we can start playing with putting some spices and other flavorings in and getting the texture where we want it to be. This fucking thing is ready to get flipped. Like I said, you can see the cheese is oozing out. They put so much fucking cheese in this sausage, man. We want the bottom to be crispy crisp, and it looks like it is. So again, just like when we put it in, be decisive. Don't be a pussy. Get under there. Grab your pan for some leverage. And flip. Look at that! Now this is, a, this is a key part, all right? So you want to kill the heat almost, because this thing's, you don't want to overcook it, you don't want it to be too dry, all right? So let's take a look at that. We can see that there? I think you can. So this is ready to go in the oven. We got the broiler on, all right? The oven's getting the temp, but we're broiling. You know, we don't want to bake it out at 500, but the one side of that um, chicken patty, which is exactly what that is, is already cooked and ready to go. Uh, the, the top part, and about 60-70% of it is. The bottom, which is raw, is currently cooking in this cast iron pan, which is why it's very important to use a cast iron pan. So what we do now, 
We're gonna finish the cooking in the oven and with the residual heat of the cast iron pan. We're gonna sauce this, like I said, like a beets. Fuck your cauliflower pizza. That's right. Fuck your cauliflower pizza. I love cauliflower, bruh. Don't get me wrong. Fuck that shit. Cursing too much? Sorry. This isn't a children's program. All right, so that's sauced up. Looking real nice. You know the sauce is good because I made it. And now you've hit it with some fucking cheese, bruh. Now this sausage has a lot of cheese already in it, so I don't want to go overboard, but I do want to make it look like it's pizza, mainly for the gram, for the picks. That's really all I'm going to do. That's, that's all the cheese I'm going to do. Maybe one more hit. If you want to get real extreme, you start adding meat and other toppings on this, but remember, the base of this fucking pizza is fucking meat. The whole fucking thing is sausage. You don't need to be adding more shit to it. So now we pop it up. We throw this bitch under the broiler for a few. Get that cheese melty. That sausage is going to cook. I'll give it about... I got it pretty far away from the broiler. I'm giving it a lot of residual heat. So it's kind of half baking. I guess I kind of lied. And let's pull this barbecue sauce up and work on that a little bit more. All right. So the color on this is not so pretty right now. It looks like rust. It looks like rust liquid. If you ever had... You know, rust and shit come out of your, uh, your, um, what do you call it? Uh, basement. You ever have, like, a flooding basement or something like that? So now, it's going to be really important to continue to taste, at this point, the barbecue sauce. Because, um, we're adding all the molasses. Because, um... Every addition is going to make a big difference here, okay? And we want you want the color to be right, you want it to look right, you want it to have the right texture, and you want to know what you're using it for. If you're using your barbecue sauce to dip fucking chicken nuggets in, you know, unless you made the chicken nuggets, I don't really care what your barbecue sauce tastes like. You might as well go buy some shit. But I made some ribs, I made some, you know, pulled pork and shit. I want it to look and taste right, and I want this barbecue sauce has a, a purpose. This barbecue sauce, I want to be like a lacquer, almost. Not really like a lacquer. You know, I don't want it to be like, uh, uh, you know, I wouldn't add corn syrup to this. Um, but I want it to paint on really nicely. And I want it to have some nice aggressive flavor. The garlic flavor I want is there. Got a little paprika. Hopefully we get a little red, more, a little bit more red color out of that. The cumin, coriander, cinnamon vibe is there. That weird ham spice packet, which sounded odd. Uh, really fucking did the trick. I think that's a huge part of what that flavor, that flavor component that we're getting, um, that makes me think it's like McDonald's-like. Put a little chili powder in there. The heat's there. The flavor's there. The vinegar from the, we just added more pickle juice is going to be there, I hope. If anything, this might need, like, some fat, just to give it some, like, sheen and some, um, some vibe, you know, for lack of a better term. Like, it doesn't really have, like, a, a thick a density to it, I guess. It doesn't have its own personality in that sense. But it looks, it's looking good. It's getting there. I like a darker sauce. You know, I don't, I don't mind if it's darker. You know, I don't necessarily need it to look like it's a uh, tomato. Definitely get the pickle there. We got to cook that shit out. It's okay if there's a little bit of that pickle. I don't... That's okay. We might have to just add the rest of this fucking, that other fucking jar of molasses I got. To be honest with you. One, I don't think I use fucking molasses for anything else. And two, the, what else am I going to do with it? Most barbecue sauce you buy is a bunch of sugar and bullshit anyway. I think I'm talking myself into it. We're going to go with the molasses. So, like I said, I want it darker. I think all those commercial sauces get dark with uh, more sugar. And barbecue sauce should be sugary. 
I use barbecue sauce very sparingly. So I don't mind if it's very potent, sweet, spicy, all those things. That's kind of what I want. I do want the, the color on this to be darker though, like a dark red, and we're getting there. So that molasses hit is gonna help. Should also help nullify some of that acid from the, um, woo, from the, uh, it's hot. I'd add brown sugar, but again, that, that spice pack I added here, which is really the, oh boy. Now, come on, dude. Fuck with that. Come on. Look at how good that looks. I need a thing. I need a spatula that doesn't suck. people just tuning in that look at this are going to think that this is just a fucking normal banging ass piece. I'm very pleased with how that looks. If you're not, you can go fuck. I don't know what to tell you. So yeah, now if you eat that whole thing, you know, you're eating fucking eight sausages, don't do that. Unless, you know, there's some people who go on those diets where they eat fucking pounds of bacon and lose weight. So, you know, maybe you do you. I don't know. This isn't necessarily diet food. It's just more interesting, easier food that tends that this happens to be lower carb. So if you want to call that diet food, fucking God bless you. You do that. I'm not here to tell you how to fucking eat. All right, so the barbecue sauce, cook it down. I think we're just gonna let this cook and reduce and then uh, kind of see where we end up. Color's looking nicer. I think it might need a little heat now to, to, to bounce off all this sugar that's in here. Might need a little bit more um, Spices and the sweetness is nice. It's actually not that sweet. It's not too sweet for how much fucking shit is in there. I think it needs some more of this hot paprika. I think that's gonna be real nice in there. Like I said, I know this has some heat. How much is in here? Put it all in there. I know that's got some heat to it. I don't wanna, again, I don't wanna like blow it out with the heat, but it needs, I need some of that, you know? So what do I got? We got some hot sauce in here. Oh, I have... This is like a chili puree that I made a while ago. Should still be good. good. It's vinegary, hot, like that raw pepper hit. Woo! That's nice. That's going to add a nice little bite here. That's what this needs. Should be using a, you know, what the fuck's it called? It's looking real nice. So I think we just cook that down to get it to the texture we want, and it'll be fucking golden. I'm gonna do now. Let's put that away. I'm gonna make a wee little salad to go with that because 
if I don't, I'll eat this whole fucking thing. And I'm still babysitting this fucking barbecue sauce, so where am I going? Uh, so let's put a little salad together. Brilliant. A little bit of this. A little radish. Literally a little carrot. I have this whole cucumber. I want some cucumber, but we're not going to do that, I guess. And, uh... Just got a dressing here, but what the fuck? What do we got? French. I guess we're gonna have some French dressing. Mm. Gonna have French dressing. Why do I even have French dressing is a good question. But I have French dressing because, and maybe you'll see in a later episode, French dressing is a key component in making my burger sauce. So when I make a special burger sauce, I add one of many ingredients that gets added is French dress. I, for one, enjoy celery leaves in my salad. I think it adds a very nice texture. I also like radish in my salad. I'm gonna cut it this way because the salad's for me. And then we'll peel. I usually don't peel, but this this carrot looks like it could use a peel on. I always forget to cut my carrots a little larger for the salad so they're easier to eat. C'est la vie, radicchio. A little bitter red lettuce of the radic family. I just made that up. I don't know what fucking family this thing's from. But it sounded right when you heard it, didn't it? The radic family, this is from the radic family. If I was writing something, I'd look it up and give you a, a long, laborious history talk on it. But now I'm just going to cut it and fucking eat it. Did I cut this yet? You did now. I'll wrap it back up. A lechuga. I'm gonna put these lechugas away. I don't really want French dressing. I'm sad that that's all I have right now, but what are you gonna do? That's what we got. Now this sauce is looking darker, nice. I think that's closer to where we want to be. I think it definitely needs a little salt. And then uh, we may be there. We may be where we want to be with this. Again, I'm just gonna cook it down so it gets thick. I don't want. I want that thick saw, bruh. Should I turn this broiler off? No. no Let's make the salad right quick. I like a shredded, shreddy shreds. Oh, I got that onion in there. That's another one reminding me I got that onion in there. <clears throat> I 
I should use a piece of that red onion because I said I'd save it for a fucking salad. And now look at us. Making a salad. Just a wee little bit. You don't want too much red onion. You don't want to piss off the Scott Conants of the world. Fucking red onion hater. Usually I'd rinse it if I was serving to guests, but I am not. Another very important part of this meal is going to be this delicious Samuel Smith Old Brewery Tadcaster Pure Brewing Organic Lager. This knife needs a sharpening, so don't cut my balls off for cutting the knife on this piece of steel. Let's uh, season the salad a little bit. Give it a little pinch, a little hit. I don't, I don't want French dressing. I don't want French dressing. This is old and expired probably. I don't even know why I'm sampling it because it's going on my salad. Not bad. Underrated. Salad dressing. Certainly doesn't contrast my tomato sauce fucking pizza now, but uh, let's mix this over the sink so all the fucking flying pieces of salad stay in one fucking place. Lightly dressed. Mm-hmm. Thanks for following whoever just followed. Why doesn't it give me the fucking weird alerts? I thought I did that. Okay. Solid works. Not mad at it. Where'd my music go? It feels, it feels even more lonely than it really is without music in the back. All right. So, I'm gonna give this 10:15 to cook down on the barbecue sauce. I'm gonna cut up this pizza and eat my salad. I'm gonna crack this beer. And um, if anyone's watching, you can hit the phone line, 843 Rebel TV. I'll take your fucking phone calls. I'll answer your fucking questions while I eat my meal. And then when I'm done, I got shit to do. That's all we got. Go. So come one, come all. Still broadcast on the mic? Yeah, it looks good. Thank you for following whoever you followed out there. So, <clears throat> again, um, this isn't pizza. This isn't chicken parm. It's, I don't know, sausage pie? I don't even know what we would, you know. I got something for it. I got something for it. That's not it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Now, you know, to even use the word pizza for this fucking thing is kind of a monstrosity, and, and I would never call this pizza. I'd call this, um, I don't fucking know, dude. I, I don't know what it is. It's fucking good. It's only, that's not true. Let me step back. It's not necessarily good. It's only good if the sausage you get, or the base meat, 
that you use is good. If you go get some fucking shit dick bad sausage, um, you ain't gonna have a good time. It ain't gonna be good. I should get a picture of this. That seems like the right... That seems like what um, I should be doing. I should be promoting. Garlic can get out of here, though. That doesn't... It's not doing anything for my vibe. Get a good pick and put it on the gram. That's all the people care about anyway. That's good enough. Let's tell the people, the internet folk. Squiggly fucking lines. Alright. So I'm gonna just uh, eat this and uh, move on my day. There's a guy eating dinner in his kitchen. Standing up now. Making some barbecue sauce. I don't know. So again, this is only going to be as good as your... Is the lighting going to get better over here? Man, I really got to fix that. Um, this is only going to be as good as your base product. If your sausage sucks, it's going to be no bueno. Like I said, I highly suggest... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Now, if I was slinging that to some low-carb folk, they'd love it. Now, if I wanted to make this more um, pizza-like, because this doesn't have any... It's got a little structural stability. You know, but I wouldn't pick it up with my hands and try to eat it like a slice or fold it. It's essentially a fucking burger. Which is reimagined. It's just sauce I made. It's one fucking delicious. And two, very oily. Alright. I like it when I buy the chicken ground chicken myself spice it myself all this cheese and weird shit that they got in there it's all right texture's really good flavor's really good it's just not everyone's palate's different get a sausage you like stick with that the sauce i made i i usually make sauce one way the right way this time i made it a different way And while it wasn't quite the wrong way, it's different. It just has a couple different flavors in it that normally I wouldn't have in my basic tomato sauce. I don't hate it. It's just a tomato sauce that's going to be designed for something else. That tomato sauce has a different home than pizza and uh, pasta.
Again, you're off track. If you want to call this a low carb and you know healthy, you can. Sorry, looking up uh, stream data, very exciting stuff. Um, I'll have another slice. So again, if you wanted to say that this was low carb, just keep the breadcrumbs out. I didn't put that many breadcrumbs in, but keep them out fully and you got yourself uh, way low carb. I think. I, don't, I can't find any other carbs in there. You're trying to be uh, cholesterol fat free minded. Don't add extra cheese. Don't add the egg. You, know, you don't really need to add anything to it. You could just do a sausage patty and it'll be all right. I like the egg as a binding agent. I think it keeps it all together a little bit more. I like the breadcrumb because same thing. I think it binds it all together a little bit more. So that's me, you do you. The key of the technique is pushing it out into a patty, flat, searing it off hard, 70 to 80 percent on one side, flipping it, killing the heat, treating the top like a pizza, saucing and cheesing it, and then popping it under the broiler until it's done. That's the, that's what you should be learning here. Not fucking diet buzzwords. I don't do that here. Excuse me while I let my dog in. Oh yeah, delicious. Yeah, I gotta say, it's pretty good. Come on in, bud. Come on, buddy. All right, I mean, you scratch to come in and then you don't come in. What are you doing? Come on. All right. Uh, I don't know what else we could be doing here. I think that concludes the cook day. We're gonna finish up this sauce. I'll let it cool. It's bubbling now, you can see it. I think you can see it. All those sugars, you can see those like, you know, not only is it boiling, you can see that the sugar is getting hot. Got that sugar boil. No, I mean that sugar boil. Mm. So I'm just gonna let that go a little bit, keep it on low, keep an eye on it so it doesn't scorch. Let it thicken up a bit. And um, cool it down. Throw in that pickle jar, throw in a, in a squeeze bottle. And then when I make some barbecue, I got that sauce ready to go. I will clean out the Vitamix, which is also very, always very exciting to watch on a cooking show, a guy clean his blender that doesn't scream entertainment, I don't really know what does. Well, you guys are, you really get it all when you watch the Hack Chef program, you yeah? know? Real exciting stuff. 
I'm gonna keep this over here. I'm gonna fire that up after. The ketchup can certainly go away because I think we're done adding ketchup to the sauce. I think we're done here. Yeah, we finish this eating and then uh, clean up and get the fuck out of here. Almost two hours. We cooked three pounds of grilled chicken. Made a barbecue sauce while cleaning out our pantry and our fridge. Made a weird chicken parm slash pizza thing. Made a salad and ate it. Two hours. It's pretty fucking good, ma'am. I really wanted to clear out that fridge a little bit, which is nice, so got to use a lot of weird shit in my barbecue sauce. Pickle juice, hot sauce. That fucking ham packet glazed. Definitely need better lighting in here, man. Top lighting is doing nothing great for me here. You know? It needs to be addressed. Mm. Well, well, well. That was tasty. And I think that concludes our Hack Chef program. Join us later, um, where well, I think I'm going to try to live shoot some gaming, see if that works. I got a poker game scheduled later on. I think we're going to put that on, see if that goes. All right. Good talk, team. Thank you for joining. Thank you for subscribing or following everyone who joined. Hope you learned something. I don't know if you did. If not, try again next time. It's going to be great. Thank you for joining. Let me cue up the outro music, which is very similar to the intro music. And then I will cue out, if I can find the screen, the end of transmission. Thank you for joining again. Follow me on Instagram, HackChef, HackChef.com. Um, give a Rebel Vision a follow every time we go live. Check it out. We're always doing some interesting, cool shit. Uh, see ya.